Hello folks, David from Terraintronics here. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how I made lighting effects to go into large clouds that made it onto John and Tabletop Witchcraft's latest video. In John's latest video, he needed to cover a 6x4 table built by Wormwood Gaming to have lightning effects throughout. I didn't have a simple module ready to go, so this had to be a custom assembly. The requirements were given to me by John were that this be simply powdered batteries, that it be as bright as possible, and that it be an assembly that would be put simply together. Typically, when we're dealing with LEDs, if they're going to be on permanently, we would just simply connect them to a Conway Castle board from Terraintronics, or if the LED already has a built-in resistor, just directly to the battery with a switch. Sadly, lightning effects require a little bit more randomization and pattern generation, so we needed a programmable source that we could program in the LED pattern. All the components used below have links to the Terraintronics and Amazon listings in the description. The most you'll need is a wire wrapping tool and a soldering iron. These 1 watt cold white LEDs from Amazon are perfect for the job. They provide almost 20 times more light and already have a current limiting resistor on them so that you get maximum power when you drive them with a 5 volt source. However, most microcontrollers, including Arduinos, cannot drive that much current or power into the LEDs, so we need an external transistor to amplify the current into the LED. And that's where the Terraintronics Kiro Castle board comes in. Kiro Castle boards take a 5 volt supply in and then have a gate pin on them that are used to send the on and off signals. When the appropriate signal hits the gate pin, the transistor switches power onto the LED. To do this, I needed a simple and small Arduino board. For this challenge, I chose a DigiSpark Arduino compatible board. It runs from 5 volts, allowing everything in the system to run from the same battery source. Here's the assembly diagram. It shows four AAA batteries being used, but in fact, the battery pack I used is a three AAA pack with an integrated power switch. That's one less extra component I needed. The four and a half volt power rail from the batteries are shared between the DigiSpark, the Kiro Castle board. Ground is actually shared between the DigiSpark, the Kiro Castle board, and the LED itself. A control signal goes from P1.1 on the DigiSpark to the gate pin on the Kiro board, and then LED plus on the Kiro board goes to the LED. And that's the positive of the LED taken care of. Now because this LED already has a resistor, we can connect its negative signal back to the shared ground of the system. Now, this isn't a YouTube coding channel, and I'm not a great programmer, but I wanted to take a few moments to talk about the lighting pattern itself. Every light source has a pattern. A simple on switch has a single state, on. A flashing light might have two states, on for a second, off for a second, easy. I took a little while to think this one through, so bear with me. Lightning effects have three states, and each of these states set a few things. The LED state, the pointer to the next state, so which one's next, and then finally the delay until the next state, so stay doing what you're doing and then move. Waiting to strike is the long delay between lightning strikes. The LED state is off, have a look at the cloud. The next state will be LED on and with a random delay of between 3 and 8 seconds. So it waits before it strikes between 3 and 8 seconds. And then we get the on state. The LED state is on, LED on, and it's told that the next state will be off and that the delay was tuned by eye, so I had to change it over and over again to be about 20 milliseconds. That's about 1 50th of a second. The off state is used to switch off the LED and then run a random number to decide if it's going to do a double flash or go back to its initial wait state. So a double flash gets a short 80 millisecond delay. The next state that it's going to go to goes back to the on. A wait state choice sets the next state to be back up to wait with a delay of zero. So as soon as you're done flashing, switch off the LED and then move back up to the waiting for strike. I like to use these white spring connectors so the LED can be moved elsewhere in the build. Now that we've assembled the electronics, they'll need something to hold them. Now I'm a massive fan of laser cutters and 3D printers. They each have strengths and they can be designed for in similar ways. I used Autodesk Fusion to design the enclosure. 3mm plywood is an excellent material as it has some strength, it's quick and easy to cut, and I can use regular glues to assemble with it. 
The only downside with plywood and laser cutting is that it's quite difficult to do real 3D. You end up doing something more like 2.5D. I make this file available as a Fusion file, a 3D printable STL, a 2D SVG file, or a Lightburn file for those of you that have laser cutters. So there you have it. Electronics, check. Code, check. Enclosure, check. Everything looking awesome in John's video, check. Now, for all the code, shopping list, and cutting files, look in the description below for links. Thanks again for stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video, and check out terraintronics.com to get your Keru boards. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.